Hello, I'm Peace Emmanuel from Zenith University. Keep watching X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Hi, my name is Steven Meyer from Radford University College. Keep watching X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Hello, my name is Harriet, a student of the University of Ghana. Keep watching X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Hello, my name is Mia Jubaini from the University of Professional Studies. Keep watching X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. It's Fuse! Yes, it's your boy Fuse ODG and you are now tuning into X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Because you know they're spreading the best message for the world. Let's go. Hi, I'm Christy Jackson, founder of Women CEO Project, and I am on X Live. After the break, I'll tell you more about my company. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? There are a lot of people in this country that have money, but I don't know what to do with it. Entrepreneurship is not about money. A lot of us have talent and a lot of us is great at what we do, but without the business aspect, you will lose. <laughs> I don't have the answers, but I absolutely have all the questions. How often do you see and interact with them? How do they start? What is their understanding of entrepreneurship? Their challenges. How do they entertain and relax themselves? Season 5 seeks to ask those who represent us in Parliament, probing questions that we, the youth, in the market, on the street, in the ghetto, at schools, and corporate Ghana wish to find answers to. Join me, Basi, as we together find answers from the lawmakers and entrepreneurship season of X Life. X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Who is Christy Jackson? Well, I am a businesswoman first. I started my company, Women CEO Project, essentially because I was looking for a way to become a better, more consummate businesswoman. Um, I started exactly what I needed. I was looking for a way to not go to networking events and just, you know, socialize, get drinks. I wanted to find out how to actually go into my office the next day and make money. I wanted tangible business skills and I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I started it. Since then, I've traveled the world working with women entrepreneurs in places like Monaco, Dubai, London, South Africa, and even Nigeria. And I help them to become more profitable companies and to market themselves well. I grew up in Alexandria, Louisiana in a pretty small town. I had no aspirations of ever making more than $30,000 a year. That just isn't what happened in my, in my neighborhood. My parents were educators. Uh, they taught me to really focus on education as opposed to socializing. I was always into sports. I was always into how could I do in school. I was always into you know being active and being well-rounded. I was in arts, I was in dance, I was an athlete, but I also had to have you know really, really good grades. Um, my mom has always told me that when other girls were playing with dolls, I was playing with my desk. I didn't know what kind of business I was doing. I didn't even know the word entrepreneurship, but I always had a desk, I always had books on that desk, folders, pens, and I was ready for something. That's the way I grew up. I actually went to school to be a computer engineer and I have I do not have the personality to be a computer engineer I like to crack jokes I like to be a little bit more sociable and after I graduated with my degree I couldn't find a job it was after September 11th in the United States and computer science majors weren't being hired anymore we were getting laid off so I had to pick a new career I decided to move to Houston Texas from Louisiana and look for opportunity. As soon as I got to Texas, I felt like I wasn't in the right place. It seemed like everyone had money, everyone had a business, people were you know, lighting their cigars with dollar bills, that's the way it felt to me. And I felt like either I'm gonna leave or I need to learn how to start my own business. About six months after I moved to Houston, Texas, I enrolled in real estate school. Um, I became a realtor. And after five years, I decided to become a broker. 
During those five years, I learned most of the skills that I know about business now. Hitting the pavement, hitting the street day in and day out, trying to get business when you don't know who needs to buy a house, who needs your skills. It gets you out of your shyness, helps you to pick up sales skills, and that's where I learned most of the things that I actually teach in my now company, Women CEO Project. So, like I said, I needed to learn more tangible business skills. Like I was getting to the point where I needed to grow. I needed to have a bigger business. And I was looking for organizations that could help me do that. I couldn't find it. That is how I started Women CEO Project. I started the company a day after I moved into a new office. I had agents in my office who were waiting for me to direct them on how to be good real estate agents. And I had an idea. And the day after I opened my office, I started a second company, Women CEO Project. It wasn't supposed to be a company when it started out. It was just supposed to be a way to get these business skills. But after about a year and a half, I got awarded by the White House for my work to better the lives of women entrepreneurs. And at that point, while I was still in DC, that's when I decided I need to take this side business a little bit more serious, get a website and really map this thing out. And we've been doing that since 2012. Entrepreneurship basically means you eat what you kill. You go out, you make your own opportunities. If you don't see opportunities, you create them. And you really just, you know, you're optimistic. You're optimistic, you're a person who thinks about what can happen as opposed to all of the things, all of the obstacles in your way. Um, entrepreneurship to me means that you don't need, a, you know, someone to pep you. Every now and then you need a pep talk, every now and then you're having a bad day, but you have internal motivation. Most of the times when I'm having a bad week, I have to pep myself up. I have to pray, I have to listen to music, I have to get myself back hype and remember why I'm even doing this business in the first place. Who is watching me? Watching me, some to see me fail, some for me to give them inspiration. And I remember those things to keep me going. Entrepreneurship is one of the most rewarding careers that you could ever, ever, ever have. It is also one of the toughest. I like the way you motivate. Believe in what I do, so we cultivate. Uh -huh. Like, follow, and ping us on our social networks for more updates. Get on Broadway. Broadway. You're here with me, Khadija Musa, and I'm an ex-life correspondent here in Midrand. How would you feel if you take charge of your own idea? Now, leaders have the audacity to stand on international media and talk about youth engagement and youth empowerment as if they care. We are here on the ex-life. Ex-life, ex-life, the mouthpiece for the youth. I don't have the answers, but I absolutely have all the questions. How often do you see and interact with them? How did they start? What is their understanding of entrepreneurship? Their challenges. How do they entertain and relax themselves? Season 5 seeks to ask those who represent us in Parliament. Probing questions that we the youth in the market, on the street, in the ghetto, at schools and corporate Ghana wish to find answers to. Join me, Basi, as we together find answers from the lawmakers and entrepreneurship season of X Life. X Life, the mouthpiece for the youth. Hey, CEOs, Christy here with Women CEO Project. What I want to talk about today is of uber importance because I'm running into so many women and a few men who are having this particular problem. And the problem is trying to turn your hobby into a business. Trying to turn what should be a hobby into an actual business. Because keep this in mind, a business makes money. So if your hobby 
is something that you spend your time on, something that you thoroughly enjoy, but it doesn't make money, you're not gonna be able to turn it into a business. The type of woman that my company serves best are women who are interested in not only learning, but actually using their information. It's so many skills that we know, we learn every day, we read books, we go to conferences, uh, we get advice, but so many of us won't use that information. So she's definitely a woman who wants information and who has every, every intention on using it. Um, also, she's a woman who wants to create her own money. She's not waiting to get married. She's not waiting, you know, to find a husband or someone to give it to her. And a lot of the women in my organization are married, but that isn't the only way. So she's a woman who's looking for options. Okay, and she's also a woman who's very ambitious, who doesn't just want to work a nine to five. She's a woman who wants to create something that can be flexible with her life. If she has kids, if she wants to travel, if she has parents she needs to take care of, she's a woman who's looking for options. I want to name three achievements that I'm especially proud of. One of them is called the Women of Power Virtual Summit. It is a summit that reaches women all over the world. It was a first of its kind when I first did it in 2012. So I put together 15 speakers, 15 women from around the world, and I live streamed them for an hour each to teach a different business class. For the first time we had that conference, we had over 3,000 attendees, women in Kenya, women in Ghana, women in Cameroon, Australia, London, women from all over the world joined the conference and attended the conference for free. Uh, that conference is actually what got me to the White House. It was recognized, it, it spread through Twitter, it spread through social media, and it's what got me on the radar to get to the White House. That's one. Uh, two is a magazine called Power Culture Mag. Power Culture Mag, I created um, out of just, again, a need to want to give inform information to women in a digital format so, again, it could reach women all over the world. That magazine has featured entrepreneurs who are very sought after, like Barbara Corcoran of uh, Shark Tank, Sophia Nelson, who's a best-selling author, Lisa Nichols, who is one of the authors of The Secret. Um, it's featured several women, again, all over the world, and it can also be accessible to women all over the world. Um, the third achievement is actually opening up my business event center, which is called Behind the Grind by Women CEO Project. It's in Houston, Texas, and it is a space where women entrepreneurs can come in and host their own business events, workshops, meetings, presentations, because it's kind of hard to say that you're successful and you're trying to speak over coffee grinds at Starbucks or give a proposal and you don't have an office. And I wanted to offer that to women. So that, that event center is rented out all day, weekends, during the week for meetings for women. Those are three accomplishments that I wanted to point out. My reason for coming to Ghana is to really get on ground and work with women entrepreneurs and potential women entrepreneurs here. I travel the world and I meet women and I always thought that the things that I was creating or the things that I needed was specific to me, specific to American women. And once I began to travel, I realized that women all over the world, even though we speak different languages and we have different cultures, we need the same things. We need to know how to market ourselves, how to get customers, how to build our brand, how to be professional, and then also how to make money so that we don't just start a business, but we stay in business. It's my goal to make Ghana one of the countries that I frequent and work with women entrepreneurs here on ground. So hopefully I have uh, you know, some workshops and some events upcoming. I'm uh, working on some things, including a conference, um, a book tour. This is a book that I just wrote, it just published. It's called The Master Strategy Planner. It is actually available 
on Amazon or digitally. And I made it available digitally so that, again, it can reach women all over the world. And it basically takes an entrepreneur from point A to point Z, bringing them all the way through the steps of creating their business, planning their business, finding out what their financial funnels are, how to market their business, how to uh, create paths to actually get to the decision holders who can write them the bigger checks, who can give them the bigger deals, can give them contracts. It takes an entrepreneur, even a novice or an experienced entrepreneur, and helps them to plan out and launch their goals. What I have planned for women in Ghana is to offer them regular business courses that they can attend online, some of them live, and they can learn how to start a business, how to market themselves, how to grow a business, and how to sustain a business. That is what I plan for Ghana. I like P-Square. I like WizKid, and I like a lot of different Can't reggae artists. You see? I don't care who you are, where you from, what you do. Just as long as you're chasing money, do what's right, never give up on it. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? Are you ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall. Bring it on, bring it on. My favorite, my favorite quote is by Samuel Beckett, and it's fell, fell again, fell better. Even if I fell, I'm going to fell better than I did last time. I'm going to continue, continue, continue to try. That's my philosophy. My advice to the youth of Ghana is if you have an idea, don't wait for permission from anyone. Don't wait for a go team. Don't try to get consensus from 10 of your friends or you know the people around you on what you should do. Take the time and decide for yourself. If you are 40 years old and you had an idea at 25, you're going to regret that you didn't pursue it, that you didn't at least check it and try and see if, that, if it, it could work out for yourself. I tell people all of the time, don't accept anyone else's failure story. If I'm going to fail, if it's meant for me to fail, I'm going to find out on my own. I don't want to accept anyone else's failure story. So don't you accept anyone else's story, anyone else that business didn't work for, or they, they shouldn't have started this, or this one's business failed. That was them. That's their story. Create your own story. Big inspirations. Thank you. Huh? Rising, rising, keep it high. Rising, rising, rising. bring it on. This life is not easy. So much hustling and puzzling. Everyone is struggling. So make you know they believe it. Since everyone is chasing, you're never gonna make it. Never say no, never give up. Keep your head up, standing tall. And for sure, you go turn it up. Turn it up, turn down for what? Hey, Shane and them talks say, we no go blow oh, Shane them they see us now, we don't dig low Take a look at me now Take a look at me now We're running things in this town Can't you see? I don't care who you are Where you from, what you do just as long as you're chasing money Do what's right, never give up on it Bring it on, bring it on Are you ready? Uno ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall Keep your head up high and standing tall Bring it on, bring it on Are you ready? Uno ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall Keep your head up high and standing tall And rise Rising, rising, keep it high. Rising, rising. I don't care who 
who you are, where you're from, or what you do. Just as long as you're chasing money, do what's right, never give up on it. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? Are you ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall. Keep your head up high and standing tall. Bring it on, bring it on. Are you ready? No matter how you try, don't you ever fall Keep your head up high and standing tall And rising, rising, rising Keep it high, rising, rising Bring it on